Sound effects all 100%, alright. Small town outside New Orleans. God damn it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Quiet down, Agent Jones. You're on the clock. Quiet down? Ha! You, you have any idea what you've done? I'd be half naked in Havana right now. If you hadn't shown up, soaking up some rays, surrounded by a harem of bikini queens, a mojito in one hand, and a seafood-slathered Havana-style pizza in the other. What did I do to deserve this? Does God hate me? No. <laughs> the regional bureau chief merely issued a special order. <laughs> oh. Yeah. How could I forget? A special order to rob me of my well-deserved vacation. You want pizza? I'll buy you some pizza. You can find that junk anywhere. Whoa! Hey! Hold on. What did you just say? Pizza is not junk. <laughs> pizza is a sacred food bestowed upon us by God himself. You need to apologize right now. This is sheer blasphemy. Apologize to who? Pizza or God? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> You think you're so clever. Maybe if you'd eaten pizza this morning like a decent person, you wouldn't have cut your finger. What? I only the cut fuck? my finger because I couldn't find a left-handed can opener at the hotel. Normally, I would never make such an amateur mistake. Oh, really? Well, if you want me to get into gear, then just feed me some pizza, okay? We must act unfaithfully and abandon our ideals again and again. Agent Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. The moment you let your guard down, he'll strike. Also, that was weird. Um, I didn't really control the character. I could only move her forward and she would move on back. Remember? Yeah. 
Holy shit. I'm smoking marijuana. Oh, what the? That guy didn't take that. Please, that long ago. You have questions for us. That's why you're here, isn't it? Can I still only... Why did they even make it... A playable section if I can't really do anything. Man, Zach has seen some better days. Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Please keep that in mind as you speak. Do we have permission to film this? Miguel Davis. Hmm? Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. What? Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis, and this is... Simon Jones. An analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh, hi. Is that the same voice actor for that? Seriously. A southern belle and a lonesome loser who can't catch a break. Quite the uncanny duo. We'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years has it been since someone came to chat with us? Oh, but don't ask me about my fairy. That's a private matter. It's hard to tell what he's thinking. Come my on, what eyes happened to him? Deceived. Also, yeah, I think that's probably the same voice actor, but um, I'm so used to. Uh, um, York talking, but since York is gone, uh, we haven't really got a chance to get used to Zach's, so. um, speech patterns. If he's hiding something, it'll come out in his face. Not gonna lie. With this interface. Letters of appreciation from the governor and the Department of Justice. They're caked in dust as if he doesn't even care about them. You solved many difficult cases across your career. Utilizing your own unique M.O. You've expertly cracked cases that were otherwise thought to be unsolvable. According to our records, 
After joining the FBI in 2002, you quickly solved two drug ring related kidnapping cases. In 2003, you solved the inside out flesh skinner case in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. In 2004, the Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe case in Milwaukee, and also the stuffed human collector case in St. Louis that very same year. What the fuck? Then, in 2005, you coincidentally happened to solve the Lise Clarkson murder case while on vacation. <laughs> you went on to solve many other cases after that, all of them seemingly inexplicable. Did you really solve these cases all on your own? There are no records of you using a wide-scale investigative team or working with anyone else. How did you ever accomplish such monumental feats all by yourself? It was all thanks to our talented partner. Partner? The FBI files show no record of you ever working with a partner. Do you mean you worked with some sort of unofficial partner or an outside confidant? Our partner is our partner. We've always worked together. Besides, Belle, you're forgetting one important thing. After the St. Louis case, we stopped by a diner on our way home and caught Thelma and Louise, two highly sought after fugitives. <laughs> Use the vision to acquire important hits that will help you proceed through the game. Hold Alt, use vision. Using a vision will deplete your concentration, so be careful about not using it too much. Huh? Excuse me, Mr. Morgan, but would you please refrain from consuming that while we speak? I'm talking about... Yes, that. You married Joanna. <sighs> you don't get in our way and we won't get in yours. Unfortunately, questioning doesn't work like that. Our data needs to be consistent. Now please put out that stinking indulgence right this minute. What? <laughs> what? If we say no. Then I'll put it out myself. Using force. Wow. What whoa, the whoa, Aaliyah. This is Morgan's house. Besides, it's legal in Massachusetts for individuals to consume cannabis in the comfort of their own homes. Then I mean, come on. It's medicinal. Exactly. Francis Zach Morgan. He was once an FBI special agent, an extremely talented one. At least that's what they tell me. Perhaps he was a little too talented. Oh, okay. Hey, Belle. Why are you dressed so handsomely? What are you talking about? The thick black accessory wrapped around your neck. That's a male necktie. The color black represents confidence and interest in the self. And your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society. Or perhaps it's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. We admire your bravery. I thought you retired from profiling. 
bullseye, huh? Hmm. You're an easy one to read. In order to think with society, a man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. Don't judge a book by its cover. For someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? <laughs> okay, Aaliyah, that's enough. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Agent Jones, that's sexual harassment. <laughs> So, Bell, does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals? <laughs> He's more dangerous than I thought. I can't read him. I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then. First, I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up. Stage four progressive malignant tumor. How do humans behave when they know death is just around the corner? Oh. What if that human is also a high-functioning sociopath? That's why Mr. it looks Morgan, so terrible. May I ask you a question purely out of curiosity? If it makes you uncomfortable, just let me know. And I'll retract it. Bell, what's wrong? You should put a lot of effort into that approach. It's a question about death. About this body? Are you afraid of what's coming? Think carefully about why we're smoking this, then ask us again. <laughs> Honestly, we're not afraid. Rather, we find it intriguing. Intriguing? Yes. Belle, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon in winter? No. In the dead of winter, the Grand Canyon is terribly cold. Colder than you could imagine. The cold that no photograph could ever express. The sun. <laughs> Powerless. And the temperature drops below zero. Right in the middle of the day. Meaning? <laughs> Meaning. You can't really understand something until you experience it for yourself. If you want to learn more about us, you need to gain a more experience. Yeah. An ornate antique chessboard. Looks like he stopped halfway through the game. But who was playing with him? Yeah. That chessboard looks rather old. And you can't even buy those ivory pieces anymore. Right. They were banned by the Sites Treaty. That was made in France in the 1900s. We know it's in bad taste. But the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. You play chess alone? Is that a crime? No. Yes. But it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. He's probably just replicating famous games. Or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook. Right, Morgan? I may not look it, but I'm actually a bit of a chess nut myself. Why are those milk cartons all taped up? When I was in school, I used to pour over every issue of Chess Life. The magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. Well, unfortunately, your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. <laughs> he isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. And I didn't find any chess-related websites in his internet history. 
He was simply playing chess all alone. So, what's wrong with that, Belle? I don't understand it. How could a single human being seriously play as both sides? You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. <laughs> yeah. Seems like that's a much bigger problem. Oh no. Everything was done in a perfectly legal manner. We simply happened to intercept a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. Ooh, now she's really trying to scare us. <laughs> Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. It's so weird seeing Zack like this. Like, fuck, he is... He is on death's door. These files are from the case that took place just outside of New Orleans in 2005. The agent who handled the case was Francis Zack Morgan. And now he's sitting right in front of me. Do you remember the homicides that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We solved that case. Your report states the following. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend the perpetrator. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> we stole the right to investigate from them, just as you said. It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? We don't know. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Belle. Either way, that case is closed. Closed. You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? <laughs> Come on. No need to beat around the bush with us, Belle. They found Lise Clarkson's body. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Services cold storage warehouse. After 14 years, we finally discovered the body of the very first victim. Do you know what this means? That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved, Lise Clarkson. And this is a photograph of what she looks like now. How will he react when he sees it? The body that went missing for 14 years was suddenly discovered frozen in a warehouse. This is some kind of message from the victim to us. We're pleased that her body turned up. Deeply pleased. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Lisa's body can't change anything now. And it certainly has nothing to do with us. I suspect the body was stored there rather than abandoned due to the unnatural state it was found in. She was found frozen in a storage unit. Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, She's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. Well, good for you. <laughs> even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. She looks more like a piece of art or a mythological figure from a painting. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? 
Isn't that right, my fairy? Zack is losing it. A corpse as beautiful as a goddess. Sounds just like our story. Hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah. All the Force goddesses. That went okay. Now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding something. I may be able to get what I want if we go deeper into the documents. Isn't there someone else you should have talked to before coming to us, such as? We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. You look surprised. I thought you already knew. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. We assumed you met with her during your time there. We haven't been to Louisiana. Not in 14 years. Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. That man is our witness. Aren't you, Simon? <laughs> He's right. He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve. Which means that I didn't get to either. Are you positive about that? I took the liberty of checking some airline records. Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. This is the fake name you used to use as an agent, isn't it? <laughs> a mere coincidence. Yet that's not all. That evening on the same day, a man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it stuck in his mind. Our world is filled with mysteries, and they always have the most bizarre timing. Incidentally, on the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton. Trenton, New Jersey. You can find that type of car anywhere. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> you may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these old files. Everything happens for a reason. The moment Lee Clarkson's body was found, we did the best we could to start our own local investigation. But there wasn't much we could actually investigate due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Then we assume you also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Of course. We question all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staff the warehouse and its owner, but we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. Hmm. Not to mention how bad the timing was. Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. <laughs> Remember what happened, my fairy? That warehouse, that man, so incoherent, such a pain. Hey, are you talking about the guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? Yeah, I think he started working there in 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You said he was a pain to deal with, too. Large man, yes? Hmm. No need to answer. If 
You don't want to. I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. Textbook FBI protocol. Morgan's right. Everything happens for a reason. Even this messy room. There must be a reason for it. Especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots. They're practically begging me to question them. This room's a total mess. But certain spots are perfectly clean. Is it just a coincidence? Hmm. No. There are no coincidences with this man. Holly MVA supplements. And a home IV kit. It's probably filled with highly concentrated vitamin C. He said that being on the verge of death is intriguing. But then why does he have such an elaborate home medical care setup? How does he truly feel? DVDs are all over the place. I know that he's a shut-in, but this still seems like way too many for one person. And I've never heard of any of these titles before. Do you like fresh vegetable juice? Why would you think that? There's a juicer in your sink that hasn't been washed yet. And do I smell the faint fragrance of baked beans? You didn't use much salt, did you? What are you implying? You just told me that you find impending death to be intriguing. That confused me. When I look around your room, all I can see are the many ways in which you're resisting death. Holly MVA treatment, highly concentrated vitamin C IVs, fresh vegetable juice, vegetable protein without salt, gallons of vitamin D milk for fat and calcium. The ambivalence, yes. What? Two contradictory emotions, mixing, coexisting together. An adult, mature mind is never satisfied with only one response. It's common sense. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> A stinking indulgence and a massive DVD collection. You must live a very comfortable life. The circle, aqua time two, emerald dragon, emerald dragon two, cowboy land volume two, rental car, slow sky, police dogs. We're retired, remember? Retired in your 40s. I'm envious. But who doesn't love movies, Belle? I'm not a fan. Oh, that won't do. Imagine not liking movies. He signed the Bible guy. Ninja police. Ninja police, what? Also, hey, Far, how's it going? You should dedicate all the free time you have to watching movies. It's practically an unwritten law. Films guide us. Films are filled with every important life lesson there is. Is that so? That was one of the titles. Oh, okay. What? For example, They Live. 1988, directed by John Carpenter. That film taught us a valuable lesson. Always put on your sunglasses before a fight. You know, you got a point. Movies teach us about 
everything we need to know. I learned about the right way to eat frozen pizza from Cobra. It's one of Stallone's best films. Before that, I wouldn't be caught dead trying to eat frozen pizza. <laughs> okay. I thought it wasn't fit for human consumption. But that film changed my life. Mr. Pizza Man. That was Isai. Yeah. Simon, that has nothing to do with the film. <laughs> You're just talking about pizza. Mr. Morgan. No, whatever I saw, I'm gonna prefix it with E. <laughs> e. Okay. Go for it. I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? Those are sanctuaries. They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries. That's right. Sacred places. Hovels for pure souls, if you will. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see? The soul's still there. We haven't touched a thing. But we know you can't see anything. Hey, Simon. Don't touch the sanctuary. Uh, s sorry. <coughs> That's a sanctuary. Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out. Eh, uh, my bad. Simon, you're a big dumb. I guess I'm watching Day Live tonight. Do it. It's my first time actually coming inside, you know. <laughs> You're earning far more than you deserve, then. <laughs> what were you doing all day in that black suburban? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. What do you think, my fairy? Four and a half years. All that time. What does he have to show for it? <laughs> so Crossword puzzles? No way. Come on, I thought you knew. I'm a Sudoku guy. Agent Jones. Oh my god. Oh, right. He's completely taken control of the conversation. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. Agent Jones. The briefcase isn't even that big. How long does he intend to keep that up? Does he have pizza menus stuffed inside there or something? <laughs> Do you ever drink on stream? Ah, uh, no. I drink some water though. Agent Jones, did you find the files? Found some pizza in here. Oh shit, Greenville. Mr. Morgan, do you recognize these files? Oh fuck. Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction of you. justice! We told you, go, no, say, back, to me, sanctuary, die, surround it. Ah, 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 yeah. Holy fuck. Mr. Morgan? Cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. How could I be so stupid? Okay. 
Everything should be fine now. Like if I heard a picture you drunk and I'm still trying to read off the titles. Bet. Okay. I don't think I've ever gotten drunk. Maybe a little buzz, but like not like drunk drunk. I'm sorry for being so careless. I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red. Such an unusual thing to fear. Please, accept my deepest apologies. I, I'm sorry too, Morgan. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll never touch one of your sanctuaries ever again. And no more red either. <laughs> Don't ever touch one again. I told them not to. Why would they do that? Make them go away. Sanctuaries. Don't touch. Stay away. Fuck. No. May we return to our discussion? I don't know if they specify what kind of cancer he has, but he is definitely not... not himself. How did I know milk? Touch, 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 touch. Don't worry. I won't let them touch it again. I'll keep them away from us. Strangely enough, this man has a fear of the color red. And I believe that fear is connected to the Greenville case. The files on the serial killings that shocked Washington State in 2010. Officially titled the Greenville case. And then I thought I'd take out files from a case I first heard about on the news. Starts peeing and ashing a cigarette on a sanctuary. Zach just comes up behind you and snaps your neck, probably. Here's another empty space. What does the word sanctuary really mean to him? Hovels for pure souls? Soon after Agent Jones started monitoring him, he was ordered to go through Morgan's trash but he didn't find anything. Morgan used this machine to cut up everything, from his mail to his supermarket receipts. Then he even went as far as taking out his trash in parts. <laughs> oh, wow. This is a very large shredder. Pulls out a red cable to play Matador with them. SMH. Is there something you don't want people finding out about? Hmm, good question. But we never know when some curious civil servants may come and sift through our trash now, do we? You're already retired. What are you so worried about? <laughs> it's from back when we were still on duty. Didn't they bang that into your head when you were up in Quantico? Some habits are hard to break, no matter how hard you try. Could you tell me what exactly the word sanctuary means to you? Are premonitions deadly? No. What? No. I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Jerome? So, starting off in Deadly Premonition 2, uh, apparently Zach has, like, since the events of the first game, Zach has gotten, um, cancer, and he's practically a walking corpse, which is really upsetting. Sanctuaries are sanctuaries. Nothing more, nothing less. That doesn't explain anything. Why 
do you wish to know? Just curious. Belle. You're a much ruder person than you initially seem to be. Don't you agree, my fairy? What do our sanctuaries have to do with the investigation? I never know what's happening in these games. Far, like... <laughs> you need to... You need to look up the, uh... The last stream I did from the first game, because... Oh, it, it just... It's so fucking wild what happens. I don't think anyone knows what happens in this game. Yeah. That's true. Have you heard of these games? Yeah, I like... I just stumble upon these really niche titles, honestly. But I have heard from, like, a bunch of different places that Deadly Premonition was one of those, like, cult classics that are, like, really polarizing. So then, yeah, I was like, fuck it. There's a sequel coming out. Let me pick up the first game and stream it, and yeah, I fucking loved it. And now, now here's the second one where Francis is fucking <laughs> on death's door, pretty much, smoking the weed. Here's your awesome. Cupcake, stop moving the tripod! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, you appeared a couple times during the first game. I'm just telling you, you should, like, look up the last stream, because it's the one that you didn't pop up during, because that was crazy. It's like Silent Hill with enough extra explanation to get you a little bit out of psychological trauma zone and into analytical zone. Yeah? Because pretty much... Everything, like all the survival horror stuff, all pre pretty much happens in uh, his head. And the fact that, um, yeah, that he envisioned himself as uh, York, York um, the entire time. Because everyone saw Zack the whole time, but he just pictured himself as York. I don't really know what's happening there either. There were bong toke zombies and a character was wearing a poncho. I like how they gave him that he like got a tiny scar at the on his last case. And it's like, oh I guess they're talking about the tiny scar. I mean it's not that big, but then you see how he really looks. And he has that massive fucking scar in his head. It's like, oh, there's the scar. Oh yeah, and all the bong toke zombies were um. Hey, stop fighting! You stupid guts. Um, yeah, all the bong toke zombies were the were the ghosts of all the people who, um. Who died during the initial, like, when they were doing the military experiment with the frenzy gas. That, that, that's where all those people came from. My friend! Yeah, they were fighting. <laughs> no, with an internet connection, he wouldn't need to buy all these DVDs, Blu-rays, he could watch whatever he wanted. He's a movie buff. He probably, like, needs to see them and, like... I don't know, in some sort of quality that's not like crisp HD 4K 20,000 uh, pixels. If you're out of questions, then how about just going home? Hey, mind if I jump in here? What is it, Simon? We hope you've got a real question for us. Well, actually, I'm also a little curious myself. No one's supposed to touch any sanctuary, right? <laughs> I only watch movies on 4MM film. Prime Video and on Netflix have some stuff. 
That's true. Who knows? Maybe he does. But probably not. I see a VHS player down there. Oh, I mean, if you have a shit ton of DVDs, you don't really need Netflix. That's what we said. What about you, though? You can't even touch them yourself? Are there any extenuating circumstances? What are you getting at? I mean, I doubt if any of this really matters, but if no one can touch the sanctuaries, then how do you clean them? <laughs> I never thought of it before. Oh, okay, he just didn't even react. Mr. Morgan? Oh, he does have a computer. Yeah. This kind of dude would be super into music in modern times. Yeah, that's... Except only vinyl. Yeah, pretty much. You can plug it into his TV via an HDMI. Maybe he's not living quite up to, like, um current times by looking at his setup because this this is 2018 but um his mind is probably still in like 2008 or something when uh the Greenville case came I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now we don't want to remember that town I'm sorry, but there's no way around this. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over the case. I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. Is that correct? After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. What happened? That's a private matter. None of your business, Bill. Were you traumatized? Hmm. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. Rick, Tony, <laughs> my monitor. He has a, yeah, that is a boomer computer. That's like what we used to have Fucking a long ass time ago. Not like our actual first, like, computer that my family had. Does it look like he goes in a. No, oh, a fireplace? Maybe it's only for aesthetics. Perhaps. You simply finished making preparations. What are you getting at? Thinking too much about something will always turn it into a problem. The Greenvale case. Don't you think it resembles the Luke Carre case? Read the report. We have nothing else to say. I just need one more push. One more thing that can summon up the past. Honeycomb and jar? A jar of honey with honeycomb inside it. There's nothing strange about it, but it still gives me a weird feeling. What the fuck does he have? A full on tower printer. It's a it's a giant heavy duty paper shredder, because he used to be FBI. That's royal jelly. Huh? You were staring at the jar, weren't you? Do you find it strange that there's honeycomb inside? We wanted to harvest royal jelly in its most natural state. The queen's main food source, created from the worker bee's secretions. It's a perfect food, filled with power, meant to fuel the birth of the next queen. By absorbing it into our own bodies, we too can acquire that power. 
Incidentally, did you know that all the worker bees are female? No. You got some nice speakers to go with that TV. Goddamn radiator. What's wrong with having a radiator? <laughs> Guess they didn't teach you that at Quantico. Male bees are only born to inseminate, and they're born from unfertilized eggs to boot. They have short lives and don't even get stingers. Sort of feels like a glimpse into the future of our society, wouldn't you agree? Women are gifted with the power to conceive, give birth, and nourish their children. But men, men are consumed with the job of providing women with the chance to do so. If women no longer had to rely on men for the seeds of life, they would soon cease to desire them, we believe. Be careful, Simon. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? No woman wants your pizza, your pizza knowledge. Your bell's already stolen the reins from you. It seems so archaic. I mean, the, the radiators, they just heat up your your fucking apartment. I mean, that's... that's it. <laughs> they do the, they do its job well. Just don't leave anything on it or else you have some liquid, uh... <laughs> fucking what? I'm trying to think. I remember someone leaving... I think like a 3DS or something. I remember one of my friends left their fucking 3DS or some shit on their fucking radiator and it melts it. And it's like, well, that's what happens. <laughs> Looks like another old antique. He collects milk cartons but treats valuable antiques like trash. What's going on in his head? The silver clock in that trash pile. Is that an H5? Especially in places in North where like they're not heated by electric but gas. Yeah. That's right. John Harrison's fifth chronometer. Completed in 1770. After many years he completed it and presented it to the Board of Longitude in order to end their feud with him. That's only a replica, of course. You like clocks? Clocks are amazing. Prime fruit of the human race's intellect. We took the invisible idea of time and manifested it in these. Yeah, I love clocks too. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> I disagree. Oh? Why? Time is valuable precisely because it can't be seen. Should they uh, gas for selection or winter months? I live in Canada and are pretty much non-existent. Oh, gotcha. We use gas for chip, but we have furnaces that blow hot air. Ah. Yeah, you probably definitely need more heavy-duty stuff when you're that far north. Yet nowadays, people can't tell what time it is unless it's measured in numbers. Talk about idiocy. I don't mean to side with the Board of Longitude, but remember, humans used to cross oceans with the stars alone. We have our eyes to read moon charts and study the sky. We don't need clocks. What if it's cloudy or stormy? All you need is courage and a love for adventure. <laughs> hmm. Hear that, my fairy? Courage and a love for adventure? <laughs> Come on, Belle. Surely you know how many lives have been claimed by your pal's courage and adventure. <sighs> hey, all the <laughs> Yeah, though. Here's passively pipe the heat from the furnaces elsewhere. Yeah. Board of Longitude thing. What the heck is that? I mean, I've heard of it before. I'm an FBI analyst, remember? I just sort of can't remember it right now. 
I know what it is, really. Sure, Mr. Jones. I'm telling the truth. Come on, Aaliyah, back me up here. Aaliyah? <laughs> a picture of a leaf. This isn't just a picture of any leaf. It's the most important leaf. The belief in truth begins with the doubt of all truths in which one has previously believed. It's time to get down to business. Oh boy. So Indiana at frequently tons of houses have those, but we're scouting you to have to aggressively dump heat. Yeah. Dump it all, just get in all the heat. Mr. Morgan, please look at this. What did we just say? We don't want to remember Greenvale. This isn't a photo from Greenvale. Look closely at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zack Morgan. This photograph predates Greenvale. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Red. Red tree. Red tree. Yes. A red tree. Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. Oh. The Greenvale case and the Lee Clarkson murder case. They're connected by these red trees, aren't they? Red trees. Answer me. What are these trees? Red trees. Figured it out. Yes, smarter than we thought. Connection. Red trees. I want the truth. Places where you don't have winter, where it's very mild, they're just sort of chilly at night. I don't work fine. I think I've ever seen a radiator in person. Yeah, it, it never gets down that negative, like in the northern states, but like it typically gets around, I'd say, like around negative 10 or like 15 at its worst with like the wind chill and stuff. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> the red trees. You really did your homework. Well done, Belle. You're good. Damn good. <laughs> Mm. Are you ready to talk now? I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. Fine. We'll tell you. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Yes. It was that red tree. That red tree ruined my life. It was... It was a sultry summer day. The sun comes down hard on you in the south, like a torrential downpour of demonic whiskers. It all started back in that sweltering summer. We still had our best friend with us back then. The other me. <laughs> My better half. Oh, shit. Go 
know a thing that's been long forgotten, but it haunts me my destiny to be alone. Marijuana leaves on the like a mini ass chick right there. Holy shit. Wow. Boy, the rip Zach. Zach. Can you hear me, Zach? There you are, Zack. <laughs> Sleeping again? Uh, I think the one behind the guy would be able to keep the entire room warm. Yeah. Pissing off, they take up space. I, yeah, like even small radiators like that can fucking heat up a decently sized apartment. It's pretty, it, it gets pretty damn hot, like. Like, yeah, if, if like the windows are closed and like all the doors are closed, that should be fine. Well, rise and shine. It's time for us to head back out into the chaos. It's chaos time. Isn't that right, Zach? Blessing in the sky. Damn, talking about radiators. This is the official radiator stream. Only radiator talk is allowed. Is that a hook? Zach, it looks like she wants us to join her for breakfast. Perhaps this town's finally starting to warm up to us. He looks so young. Look at that, Zach. She's welcoming us with open arms. Man, She's even willing to share that tasty morsel with us. Got a whole what ass pineapple. 
It's just gonna go Hurry up and, and chow run. down, mister. Unless you like your breakfast stale. What an amazing place. I've been on top of the moon since the moment I got here. And the name of this wonderful town, Lacarne. Sounds like French to me, but what does it mean? I'm the chef, David. If you want to know about the town, you'd better ask the concierge. Only amateur chefs flap their gums about stuff that ain't food related. Did you hear that, Zach? He's a true professional. You say something, mister? Uh, no, not to you. I was just talking to Zach. Zach? Please don't ask me about Zach. It's a private matter. If you say so, <laughs> still. Never thought the FBI would ever come out to a little old town like ours. I do work for the FBI, but I didn't come here for an investigation. I just happened to stop by on my way to New Orleans. Ah. <sighs> Never thought there'd be a murder out here either. And it was a 16-year-old kid. Now I tell you, this country seen better days. What you reckon, mister? Zach, he's definitely a professional, but it seems like he's also a bit lonesome. That's good. Ambivalence exists everywhere. Folks say the killer used an axe. Hell of an old-fashioned choice if you ask me. Axe Actually, Chef murder. David, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the incident. But shoot, I ain't the one y'all to be asking, Mr. FBI. I only heard what I heard. But seeing as you're fixing to grill me, I can tell you what I know. Please do. I appreciate it. I think they're probably getting trimmed out though and new homes are so clunky and awkward. Ah, uh, I mean, yeah, in new homes are probably better ways. They probably used to do what a, a radiator does. But for places that already have them, yeah, they're not gonna get rid of them. No, I don't have a radiator because I'm in Texas. And my, when I used to live in Chicago, um, and back when we used to live in an apartment building, yeah, they, we had, like, we had a radiator, and that, that would just heat up the entire house pretty f easily. This shit didn't feel so 1900s. I mean, some buildings are made with, like, are made, which were made around that time, made the whole radiator infrastructure like built into its general foundation. Like in my, yeah, like in that apartment building I used to live in back in the day. Um, they have a giant like, they have a massive furnace in the bottom, like in the basement of the uh, apartment building. And that'll pump, like, steam into the, um, all the radiators during the winter. During, like, certain times. To keep everything hot. You said the victim was a 16-year-old. Did you know her? Well, sure. I reckon the whole town did. Meaning? She's Lise Clarkson, the little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. The Clarkson family? That's right. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? The one above that huge coal storage complex. Should have had a dragonfly on it. Anyway, that's the Clarkson family seat. They own most of the land around here, from the sugar plantations right down to the food processing plant. Some building stay standing for a hundred plus years. Yeah, I mean if they're if they're built right, those buildings. Heck was that? Sp 
spooky dog noise. Um, yeah, if the buildings are built right, then yeah, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. You would literally have to fucking... You would have to do so much work to change the infrastructure of the building that you might as well... A, not even try, or B, just tear the whole building down and start brand new, which no one's gonna do either. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know? They're the ones who built up this town, and they still support it. What do you know about the Clarkson's house? There's rural parts of the USA that have shoddy hookup services. Yeah. Sixty amp electric service, not even cable internet. Yeah. That's yeah, that's far out in rural areas. Now I ain't got nothing bad to say, but I'm gonna talk straight to you. You best get clear of that place. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. They folks with real power. Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the early days. Especially the head of the family, P.J. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who goes around eating other monsters. And I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe or nothing. Things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. <laughs> I see. Well, keep that in mind. Is the local law enforcement investigating the case? Electricity goes out in a blizzard, especially in a bulb ground. Electricity carried over pile on towers, it'd be solid screwed. Oh, yeah. A pumping air without power, it could still stay warm with passive radiator heating. It's good shit, and it does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> Shoot, mister, what you think? Now, I told you this ain't no sick. We in the bonafide boondocks here. They got to know how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss y'all. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, they just beat your ass. <laughs> That's the deep south for you. This murder ain't like that though. A little kid got killed. A weird way. Like something on a TV show. The sheriff's department ain't never seen nothing like this. Live and Let Die, Angel Heart, and The Pelican Brief, right? Nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in New Orleans. They're all excellent movies, but to me they lack realism. Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Cat people. That's my point. Cat people. Cat people. 1982, directed by Paul Schrader. The crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski, the ultimate muse of the 80s. The most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Oh, shit. Okay, that was weird. I'm gonna cut off for a second. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. What in the fuck? I was awestruck by the sheer reality of it all. The fuck? So what lepers do what? <laughs> Apparently that's what the movie Cat People is about. They're mythical beings who fuck who turn into leopards to fuck and when if they wanna who if they wanna turn back to normal they have to kill the people they just fucked. Understand? I'm talking about hyper realism. After watching it, I felt like I just 
had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. What? Uh, okay. Okay! Another vital element of cat people is the presence of Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. Oh, talk about a masterpiece. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call a clockwork orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder. Period. You need to remember this because it's the truth. <laughs> mm, whatever you say, miss. So, uh, what's your part again? <laughs> Never mind. Don't worry about it. I already covered all the important parts. This poor dude talking about movies and he's like, oh, okay. When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you mean? Hey, mister, why do you look so excited, huh? Like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. Oh. Well, I ain't seen it with my own eyes. But folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. And under that bridge, there was some kind of altar. An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Something horrible. Voodoo? Nah. Wasn't nothing like that. Just a weird altar. That's all? Oh, and the body was all cut up in pieces. Scattered around the altar like. So she was sacrificed? That's what the fella who discovered her said, yeah. Bingo, Zach. This case has got our names all over it. By the way, Mr. FBI, I ain't seen a car in the parking lot. How'd you get all the way out here, huh? Don't tell me you walked. Well, that's a very good question. Chef David, you've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Oh. <laughs> oh. Huh? But you with the FBI, right? Even FBI cars can be stolen. It could happen after you park your car on the side of the road and go off to do some legwork. When you're eating lunch, when you're watching a movie, when you're asleep at night, when you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket. Your car can be stolen anywhere. That's precisely what it means to be an FBI agent. In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here. But no need to worry. I already reported it to the local authorities. And I've also already acquired another mode of transportation. Another mode? Want to hear the details? Not really. <laughs> but I'll listen if you want me to. Then please do. After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Then I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible, especially in California. But now I'm in hot and sticky Louisiana. So, I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioning system. A hybrid car? Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we finally entered the 21st century. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent? At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me on its own. Give it a few more years, and I'm sure we'll start seeing cars that run purely on electricity. Wow. Who knows? In a decade or so, electric sports cars may end up lining the parking lots of Silicon Valley. I can see it now. It's the world of The Last Starfighter, 1984, directed by Nick Castle. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic CG, but couldn't care less about that. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself. Especially the Gunstar spacecraft. No other sci-fi movie has ever had. So, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? Sorry, I got off topic. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. 
Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car was nowhere to be found. I remembered exactly where I parked it, right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, it had completely vanished. In short, someone stole it. And in its place, they left me this. What? Skateboard. A skateboard. A skateboard? <laughs> yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach, someone was busy replacing my brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to four wheels. Remarkable, don't you think? So then how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you look so surprised? No, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. But by the time I hit the three mile mark, I'd more or less gotten the hang of it. And by the 10 mile mark, I'd even learned to do a few tricks. It was a journey of self-discovery. Not even I knew I had this latent talent sleeping inside me. This summer's going to be another hot one. It's supposed to get over 95 today. Watch out, you don't go get heat stroke. The least Clarkson case needs us. Don't you think so, Zach? The cat people are what guided us to New Orleans. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. I'm already looking forward to it. Aren't you, Zach? Zach, the searing light. Mm, these scents. It's the deep south. Mm, that was a fabulous breakfast. You're the world's greatest- You haven't kid. eaten anything, York! That whole lobster is still there! Uh, wait, mister. You didn't take a single bite. <laughs> okay, I thought it was just not- I thought it was just them not, like, animating the food being, like, eaten. Well, the tea was to die for. But I'd prefer coffee next time. What would a morning be without coffee? He didn't eat his whole ass pineapple that he just has on his table. York, they're gonna have to throw all that food away. You know what you've done? <laughs> SMH. I'll be insulted. <laughs> yeah. to run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm so used to running on the other game. Oh, damn. They broke the stairs. I can't walk down them. Can't talk to them. I can get a soy pop. Oh shit, the prices are are actually fucking remotely close to what they should be. That 
That's a big thong. Damn, so then Fleischer must have went crazy between now and then when he went to Green Greenville. What floor did I enter? Tony Butt Stairs, I warned you. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck is that? Why is there an altar? Son Rouge. Been chasing it all over America. But I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. Don't you, Zach? I think it's about time we ordered a new briefcase. Yes, I know this one carries a lot of memories, but it's seen too much. This hole's from the shootout in Tucson. And this stains from Miami. Ah, Miami. Now that was a fascinating case. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two. Even with the help of the drugs. A feat like that still requires incredible mental fortitude. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. The same floor his blood gushed out onto. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, probably time to replace that. I know, Zach, I know. Now isn't the time for a trip down memory lane. Yeah, so for 1.30, instead of fucking, well, like $35, like a year or two later. emergent drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana. At least Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. The 16-year-old girl who was murdered. Her body was found beneath a bridge over the bayou, along with a strange altar. Powerful man who essentially controls the town of Lucari. And he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zack. You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to see on our way here, Zack. The Island. 2005, directed by Michael Bay. For a movie being shown at a cinema complex, it was surprisingly artistic. An experimental setting mixed with hard-hitting drama. It was art house sci-fi. That director's going to change the history <laughs> of art house films. Yeah, about that. Are you following me here? This is another special film that's setting a new standard, just like Star Wars and Blade Runner did. This is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that will soon become a part of film history. Yes, this single movie may be responsible for creating a whole new genre several years down the line. New genre explosions by Michael Bay. A genre known as island movies. I sure love the sound of that. Island Don't movies? No. No, I don't want to answer the door. Wanna look at this fucking... What the fuck is this? York, explain this giant fucking... <laughs> what is this? Are you the killer, York? Is that... I like how you can't even examine this thing. Out of all the things you... York, bro, you're autistic. Probably. Hey there, chef. What's cooking? Chef, what are you talking about, sir? I'm the concierge, David. I 
I just heard from our chef that you wish to learn the meaning behind our town's name. Yes, I've gathered that Lucare is French, but does it have any special meaning? Why, yes, sir, of course it does. A very clear, logical meaning. All names have meanings. Would you like to know what this one means? Yes, I would. Jolly good, sir. Then allow me to explain. Lucare means square in French. Ah, square. And? That's it. The square? It. Yes. Ah, it, sir. Square. Do you take a gander at the town map in the lobby of it fancies you? It's beautiful, valuable, and Chef, old. Chef, jolly good. I'm sure you'll understand once you see it. Now, please excuse me, sir. If you ever need anything, please don't it's hesitate to It's the twist is that it's just the one guy. Smiles. Did you see that, Zach? That was clearly David. Not a twin. Not a split personality. Just the work of a true professional. It's bizarre, but... I can understand it. Remember what they say. The job makes the man. Okay, so it was him. Okay. <laughs> Just alright. Okay. Cover non lethal bullets. It can be used in Mr. Alligator? What the fuck is a Mr. Is that the name of your gun? Oh man, I missed the picture of the finger with the band aid on it. So you can access the following journal I'm very satisfied with the decorations and the size of this closet, Zach. And it's even got a security box. What else could a man ask for? Something. It's proof that we're still safely inside the fringes of modern civilization. Stylish brown, sure. Shave, man. Shower. Why? 
I'm surprised they haven't addressed this ritual thing yet. It's kind of a weird, kind of random thing to like not discuss at all. Alright. Feel that, Zach? Dozens of paintings no one will ever see. The faint scent of tobacco baked into these walls for over a century. Now that's what I call a hotel. Zach, can you see him? His fashion sense is beyond me, but he appears to be a gentleman. Perhaps we should talk to him. Nice tie. Did you buy it here? It's been a long time since someone spoke to me. No one these days ever tries to see me. What the heck? They can see what's far in the distance, but are blind to what's in front of them. No. Maybe they're only pretending not to see. That's what civilized society does to people. Exactly. Ever since mankind got their hands on civilization, they zoomed away at a frightening speed. Zoomed away from what? <laughs> Don't be a fool. You know the answer. As for me, just call me Hunga. 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 Title given to a leader in a certain religion. Is that what you are? Yeah. Whoa, what the hell? Do you comprehend the Oracle? The Oracle? Your religion hat, Zach. Here we go. <laughs> religion hat. Built in maidens in the shrine of hunger. Find the flying serpent in the ambiguous zero. Dance with the flying serpent, and you will glimpse the other world. Ten maidens and an ambiguous zero. Got it. But what do you mean by other world? Follow the oracle. <laughs> Zach, did you hear all that? What the Looks heck? Looks like we've already taken our first step into chaos. I... So he could talk oh, such to... Such is our duty. We need to accept the chaos, let it Go? inside, and then carefully dismantle Question piece by mark. piece. And after we've put all the pieces back into their rightful places, the truth will reveal itself. Let's capture the truth and present it with a shiny pair of silver bracelets, Zack. Weird. Zack, here's another perfect symbol of the human condition, hunting trophies. And it's a buffalo hunting trophy. Now that's a surprise. I've seen several trophies made out of human skin, but never a buffalo's. <laughs> Looking at him brings out this strange feeling from within me. Yes, the very same feeling I got when watching a certain film from 1984, directed by Peter Hyams. Yeah, I thought it was a painting at first. But yeah, I guess it was a ghost in the painting, and then the ghost left. 2010. The last scene in that film filled me with such a sublime, majestic feeling. Oh, wait. 
It was filled with everything that was missing from the finale of 2001, A Space Odyssey. I just saw 2010. Fuck. Just talking about it makes me want to watch it again. I completely, like, glossed over that. I... <laughs> I really hope we didn't mention a movie that came out in 2010, even though this game, or this current time is in 2005. Let's watch it once we get home. Promise, Zach. Wait, let me see. Oh, I can't look at it again. I, I have to look it up afterwards. Or, like, look back at the footage afterwards. Finally got a save. Almost two hours in. Uh, time to put my phone on the charger. Eh? Yeah, probably keep. Probably keep streaming for like another half an hour or so. Whether it's a restaurant or a hotel, the key to charming your customers is how you present your bathroom. I'm sure you feel the same way, don't you, Zach? Now this, this is the kind of bathroom a person can really get excited about. It might even trump the one we saw in that drug dealer's house in Austin. <laughs> oh! Remember? The art piece on display in there utilized the natural curves of human ribs in such a novel way was truly brilliant. Okay. York Island, why do you like human <laughs> human sculptures that not good? Zach, this is Lucard. I think I'm finally starting to understand what our concierge was trying to say. You can tell this town was built by a very methodical person. No, wait. Maybe they just didn't care, and that's why it ended up this way. It's just another symbol of mankind's obsession with molding nature to fit our own rules. Nice, we got a map. Zach, what did you think of Hoongun's Oracle? Despite all the dramatic build-up, it's little more than a childish riddle. Heartwarming, really. Exactly the kind of feeling one gets from the good old-fashioned countryside. Okay. Now let's start by tracking down those ten maidens. The Oracle gave us a place and an act. We need to go to the Shrine of Hunger and fell ten maidens. Now where in this town can one satiate their hunger? The hotel and where? And the ten things that need to be knocked down. Simple, uh. right? Alexis's diner and lane. This is it, Zach. There are even pins and a bowling ball on the sign. Are we gonna fucking bowl? Alright. I bet we'll be able to eat some Cajun cuisine and bowl there. Maybe even both at the same time. Nice job, Zach. I knew you'd be able to find it.
Now for the other oracle. There's no flying serpent on this map. Could it be a contrail or perhaps a dragon? I'm sure we'll find out later. First, let's just figure out where we need to go. Do you know what the ambiguous zero represents? Zero is usually treated as a base number. But under what conditions would a base number be ambiguous? The answer is temperature, Zach. Yes. Zero degrees Fahrenheit is minus 17.7 degrees Celsius. And oh. zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. You'd be hard pressed to find a more ambiguous zero than that. The Clarkson Food Delivery Services Cold Storage Warehouse. That's got to be it. Even with this blazing sun in the sky, they can easily keep the temperature below freezing. Be honest now, Zach. You knew the answer from the very start, didn't you? Oh boy, 15 bucks. And how about that hoon gun? What a mysterious character. His oracles may end up determining how much time we spend in this town. Sorry, boss, but this is a smoke-free hotel. <laughs> if you're dying of smoke, head out the entrance and you'll find a smoking area in the rear parking lot. Don't tell me. You're the At your service, boss. Okay. Are you good friends with the concierge and the chef? Eh, well, we work at the same Alexa. place, yeah. yeah. But uh, I can't really say whether we're good friends with each other. We're all professionals, though. Nothing more, nothing less. I believe we've struck gold here, Zach. It just screams deep south, actually. No, it doesn't. This is all his charm. So, if I want to smoke, I should go out the entrance and around to the rear parking lot? Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> okay. I'll play by your rules. Bada bing, bada boom. tutorial stuff is on the way and it'll probably pick up a lot faster. Man, have a good night, my dude. I'll probably 
I might stream some more tomorrow. If not, I'll stream again on next Friday. Bet be there. Alright, good night. Yeah, what I'll probably do is I'll... Yeah, we'll take a look at the bowling diner places. Then after that, then yeah, I'll probably call it a night. For a second, I thought it, it froze up on us. It's so dramatic about the smoking. Oh, he probably has lung cancer. cancer. Smokers have a 4.7 times greater chance of getting lung disease. You know that means it's more likely than getting asbestos poisoning? The risk of death from lung cancer is actually much lower than what you think it is. In fact, it's tiny when compared to heart disease, strokes, and pneumonia. <laughs> We're always surrounded by easy ways to die, you know. Some people even get randomly struck by lightning and die right there on the spot. Then I reckon you also know that secondhand smokers have 1.3 times greater the risk compared to smokers? Of course. So you won't mind paying the damages when I die of lung disease? How about writing that in a contract for me? You got a pen, right? Bruh. <laughs> okay. I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Oh, that's stupid. By the way, what's your name? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Um, is something wrong with you? Adults ain't supposed to act like that. I only asked for your name so I can write it on the contract. You should have been able to figure that out if you're a real FBI agent like you said. Come on, sign here. Right here on the paper. Ah. Just as I thought, Zach. This contract paper, it's a San Rouge wrapper. San Rouge is here, too. This must mean that San Rouge is connected to the Lee's Clarkson murder case somehow. This is a sprawling case that's spread across the entire South. It's within our jurisdiction, Zach. We'll need to steal the right to investigate from the local authorities at once. By the way, miss, what's your name? Patricia Woods. But I gotta write my name myself, or else it won't be a real signature. Tell me, Patricia, does this town have a sheriff, or is it under the jurisdiction of the nearest city police? Perfect timing. Well, go on and steal it if you want it. I was just thinking about how this is way out of my daddy's league. Thank you for the information, Patricia. Okay, Zach, it's time to get to work. How should we seize control from the sheriff this time? Boy, run, crouch, dodge, man, attack, murder.
Hey there. So, uh, you're the fella from the FBI I've been hearing so much about. I'm Melvin. They call me the sheriff around here. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But call me York if you can. That's what everyone calls me. Huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Mr. York. How's that sound? Fine by me. <laughs> I'm sure you figured this out, but our town's a small one. Yeah, folks are already busy spreading gossip about how some FBI agents come to town. <laughs> now, uh, now, I reckon you came from the city. Or what was it? D.C., L.A., or New York? Anywho, in the city, it's normal not to know who your neighbor is. Fella who moves in next to you could cook up a dozen folks in his backyard, and no one would bat an eye. That's the city for you. Now, I never lived in one myself, but I visited him a few times, so I know what it's like. All pigs must die in the city of wolves. Yeah! <laughs> now, does that sound badass or what? I bet you the hey. I know, I know, CLG. I'm just trying to make a little small talk, that's all. What the fuck? Anywho, around these parts, everyone knows each other's name. So lots of folks get leery when they see an étranger like you. And since it's my duty to protect the town, I thought I'd stop by and say hello. Zach, it looks like this sheriff is quite the happy-go-lucky type. A clear indication of just how peaceful this town is. <laughs> Melvin, about the Lee's Clarkson case. I knew you were here for that case. Can't put one past the FBI. Mm. So they even got eyes on the smallest of towns like us, huh? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Our world is filled with information, and it's all within their grasp. FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Lee's Clarkson case is connected to a top secret case that we've... I know, I know. If you're fixing to take the lead, <laughs> then go right ahead. I'm just the humble sheriff of a tiny little town. My jobs are to stop my neighbors from beating the piss out of each other and listen to old folks complain. Honestly, this whole murder case has been weighing me down. So I'm gonna give you my full cooperation, Mr. Special Agent, sir. Well, Zach, that was anticlimactic. I didn't even get to use my secret weapon. <laughs> Melvin, there's a cold storage warehouse on the southern end of town, isn't there? I'd like to get permission to enter it. Say what? You want to see where the body's being kept, right? Oh, I get it now. Lisa's body, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, that's what I call a special agent. You already figured that much out. Mm. But, uh, I'm not too sure that, uh, going down there at this point is really going to help much. You know? Explain it yourself, Daddy. That's incredible. I don't believe this. Amazing. Did you hear that, Zach? They put the body in a cold storage warehouse. This is fantastic. Insanely fantastic. R really? Well, how about that? <laughs> well, all right then. I'll head on down to the warehouse ahead of you and make sure we get permission to search it. Sounds good. The management company only keeps the warehouse open during certain hours, so you'll have to come during those hours. I ain't looking to create any further disturbances. So be on time. Got it? Come on, let's roll, CLG. I'm gonna walk home, Daddy. I still got another stop to make. Oh, if you say so, sweetie. <laughs> She's a real sharp one, as you can see, so I try to stay out of her way. Well, all right then, York. I'll see you at the warehouse. 
He seems cool. Hopefully he doesn't turn out to be a psycho killer like the last sheriff. Oh boy. Get off on, speed up, slow down. <laughs> and I do. I'm kind of, kind of, um, what's the word? Oh, shit. Hey, you. I'm expositioned out. And the other day, some house said one or more rulers that would absorb heat from the sun during the day and rain, then heat during the night, keeping the house warm. Yeah? You ain't secretly cutting kids up and sticking them into jars while you work as an FBI agent on the surface, are you? Or using your FBI connections to sell kids to child trafficking organizations? I've arrested people who've done both, but I've never engaged in either of those activities myself. Of course, I have imagined doing such things in order to learn more about the psychology of the criminals I deal with. It was just a joke. Why are you getting all serious? And don't tell me what you imagine, or else I'll get scared of you for real. Hey, can I come with you? You signed a contract with me, remember? And besides, I'm kind of worried about my daddy. Do whatever you like. This is America, land of the free. But I have one condition. What condition? Don't ask me about Zach. It's a private matter. Zack, it feels like she's carrying something with her. Kind of reminds me of you back when we first met. I can't leave her alone like this. You feel the same way, don't you? She was like a mannequin. interested to see where the story is gonna go I kind of wish they did the, like I feel like the whole beginning sequence is like I mean yeah I guess it's to set up the whole story and plot but um I feel like it's more for people who played the game like 10 or so 10 or more years ago and now that they, now that the sequel came out, I was like, oh, I get to spend more time back with Zack. But because we played the game immediately after, um, the first game, I, it, I feel like it doesn't have that same impact. So, like, yeah, it was cool to see him reminisce about things, but, like, it was a lot of, like, exposition and or just like chit chat before we actually got to the game which even had more exposition well well i 
just got back. What, what, what? I'm dying. Oh my god. I feel like I might need to take a small nap or something. Yeah, unfortunately, with all. All of that exposition, it, it was you getting to the point where it was putting me to sleep. Like, that was a lot. <laughs> A lot to dump before we actually got to like the main gameplay. But luckily, when we stream next time, we should be able to jump right in at, into the actual game. Fine, go to sleep. See if I care. You will care. You will care very much. Oh, hi, Muffin. How's it going? But yeah, that'll be it for today, guys. I'll try the stream tomorrow. Um, but we'll see. Because L Lolly's going to be home too, so we might. Might actually try streaming something else. But um, but yeah, for sure next Friday I'll be streaming some more. But yeah, have a good night. Did you spend all the last stream playing the intro? No, this whole stream was the intro to the game. Like, all oh, this, these whole two hours was just the intro. Uh, the last time I streamed, I streamed twice during, on the last Saturday. Because I was so deep into the, um, so deep into the game, I just kind of, just wanted to finish it, get right to the end. And I did, and it was fucking amazing. Which I would highly recommend you looking at, because it was like, it was fucking wild. Well, yeah, far. Hope you have a good night, but that'll be it for today. Have a good one. Bye bye. Oh, there's Ant. There we go.